Hi guys, if you want to support the channel, get this, the Book of Bushido, okay? So let's talk about something called the idolatry of blood. Now, um, I recently watched um, The Brutality of Samurai by um, the channel The Shogunate, and I've worked with The Shogunate before, and I've worked with Sengoku Studies, and we've talked about brutality of samurai in multiple videos and multiple things. Now, a few things I wanted to talk about off that video because it is a superb video please go and watch it. it is an excellent video it was released only about four days ago and it is wonderful so go and have a look at that and basically there's this moment when you see ancient tribes like headhunters or you see ancient uh, ritualistic things and blood rituals and things like that we often don't associate it with the samurai. So while in the past I've talked about samurai brutality a lot on this channel and the Shogun has talked about samurai brutality and we've done mixed videos and we've used stuff from the book of samurai, headhunting, um, how to keep your heads, taking noses, everything like that as we've done. And I'm sure you guys who know this are now well aware of the, the brutality of samurai. There's the religious aspect i'd like to maybe explore or ask you guys to comment on below and explore and that's the idea of not now there's a problem here is all oh, people always think in the past places weren't secular there was no secular sort of world well, and some people say it was only religious religion was embodied within everything and same as when you talk about magic magic was not separate to humanity it was part of the existence of humans but then there are other clear examples from roman times and earlier way before samurai in different places of people who just didn't believe but i would say taking a broad view that the world in the past was predominantly religious or spiritual and that doesn't mean it's positive so a lot of the times of blood blood magic came into being by this i don't mean that you you know you cut yourself put some magic down and things will happen what i mean is this is the, the sacrifice and celebration to the gods. Now, we know that in ancient China, that um, there's the possibility that people used to sacrifice someone before they went to battle and spread their blood on the drums. It's a possibility that this also existed in Japan, this idea of sacrifice. And it definitely existed on the idea of building buildings, building bridges. There was sacrifices, human sacrifice was done. And the, the thing that people forget, though, when they talk about samurai is the actual religious conviction that they were talking to the gods a god or the ancestors and asking them for genuine spiritual help okay through blood sacrifice and i've used the word idolatry because you know it's usually an idol but maybe blood itself is the idol that the samurai can worship now of course they have a genuine pantheon of gods and when we see them they're always displayed in very bright nice colors it's very nice everything's very well put together and enjoyable it's a little bit um clean and clean cut but actually so for example when the 47 ronin killed their, their enemy they would take the head to the grave and put it on their ancestor's grave you know the person well he's not an ancestor he was their leader who died and the blood you know they washed it in the head washing well which is there within the cemetery and they put it on and say you know here we are so um it's difficult to say what was worshipped the god the action the blood the victory so the shogunate in his video comes up with a good point i'd say it's an english point of view and this by that i mean the english language is you get um um ba, ba, ba. recognition versus honor so when samurai did brutal things like taking faces off and cutting ears off taking heads off and like he points out and it's absolutely true people were pinned down and had their heads cut off if you watch a video of that today people are absolutely horrified with live beheading not with a lovely sharp sword going through they're literally pinned down while they're struggling and sawn their head off now um, i talked about this years ago and actually it was um people misunderstood what i meant and think how they were sawing the head off with a saw actually it's a wakizashi or um a a, a shorter saw than wakizashi which not many people know the name of to be honest they don't really talk about it and then they use this for and it's usually got no handle uh, no tuba no hilt and they use it for cutting through the neck and taking off yep and of course these were cherished these heads were put on parade now the difference between headhunters of other 
worlds and other continents is the fact that they usually kept the head and enjoyed it. Now, we do know of the stories of people like Nobunaga who said to have drank from gilded skull caps and they actually drank from the heads. But on the whole, the samurai didn't keep the heads. They were buried. This is probably because of the malignancy of heads. Heads in Japanese culture were very malignant and the idea is that they came along and they would he wreak revenge. This stems from a um, Chinese myth where of the head in the cauldron and the idea that there's a cauldron and you put a head into a boil to boil the skin off it and get the skull uh, but it wouldn't boil and it's alive and this head is running around and not only that it, it spits sword points at the people who were looking into the cauldron and even sometimes fly around and we that's one of the you know the many reasons why the Japanese just didn't like heads to be maintained afterwards. This brings me on to another issue. The samurai were considered touching death beneath them. So people who dealt with dead bodies, dead animals, butchery, was the eta or hinin, which was the basic, known in Japan as eta hinin, which is a very racial slur for um, lower class people. Um, but that's the way it's been said. And that happened, that went right the way through into the 20th century. There was still, just before World War II and just after really there was a caste system in japan where nobody talked about it anymore but there was outcasts who were not allowed to marry into other families they were not allowed to get certain jobs and there was actually a big push and a big protest um wave against this issue which nobody ever talked about in japan um but we should do really and um so we have these families that were dealing with the dead and but yet samurai absolutely love to deal with the dead. They'll run over, grab a corpse, take its head off, keep the head, walk with the head, and they love it. And they keep mountains of skulls. But then they think it's disgusting and bury it. So and there's simple there's things called chimatsuri, which is basically um, the the celebration of blood in a battle, which is like the, usually the first head taken. And the idea that, you you know, you've got all this blooded head and you keep it. And then you also offer heads or offer. This is difficult, actually. We need more research on this bit, though. But the offerings to Hachiman. Hachiman becomes the war god. And uh, he's not actually a god of war. He's actually a god of other things. But he is primed or used by the samurai. So he becomes the samurai war god, even though he's generally not that in, in his essence. And they dedicate their flags to him they will bring heads to him they will you know sacrifice now this is the question why i say we need more research what do they actually do with the heads once they've had them and they 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 honor hachiman the heads get gibbeted and they hire for criminals lower for higher ranking people so higher ranking people are lower at eye line so you can see them the criminals are put up there says yeah you're a criminal you're you know outside of society we don't like you so there's this liminal space. So in archaeology, in a lot of places, we talk about liminality, liminal space. And the idea is that if you go to the edge of water, it's liminal. If you go to the edge of the forest, it's liminal. It's a place where something is something and then it's something else. And there's a moment between it. Your door in from the kitchen, the, the, lim the space that you never stay. You don't go to your doorway and stand in your doorway. It's like people don't often go to the edge of the river and stand at the edge of the river beyond getting their feet wet on a hot day. You either go into the river or you come back. There's, there's a movement and often, um, like for example, the word Ogawa means s small river. People were called Ogawa because they lived, there were the poor people who lived in the small rivers. You know, the, the idea that they lived in the streams or not in the streams, along the streams. And then you've got to imagine the kappa, the, the different monsters coming out of the ocean. There's, this is back to the top down view of modern life. Modern view life has a top down view. You have a map and we all go, oh, the river. And you immediately think of a river and uh, from a large scale you think of it in a map japanese people don't see it like that in the original sorry ancient people don't see it like that you think of the river as horizontal and long like this either side and across and deep you don't see it bird's eye view but when i say to you new york like you know an overview of new york you guys will look from the top but most people in the ancient world would see it this way not this way now this creates uh, a depth of unknowing the depth and the movement of unknowing and the depth of below. So when we talk about a forest in the old world, or people just see death beyond there or being lost or danger. When you talk of a river, you see danger. You, it's a dangerous place and it's often known as the place of death. Even in the ancient days in, in the UK, we had Jenny Greenteeth, who was the, the, the 
sort of personification of death in a river. So what we have to, I'll, I'll leave it here, guys. But the, my main issue here or my main question to you guys is how dedicated were the samurai to the idolatry of blood and death and the idea of magic not being I put on some robes and I go into a circle and I do some magic. But the older idea of magic is embroidered into the world. It's no longer supernatural because it is part of the world, even though it's in the edge that nobody really sees. It's beyond human seeing, but it's there and they believe it. And the idea of brutality and death and sacrifice to the gods and the worship of the dead head. But the dead head being connected to the soul, even though they don't agree with the soul, to the ghost of a Japanese person. This is a difficult one because the Japanese, when the Christians came, actually argued against the idea of the soul. Yet the Japanese themselves say the ancestors hang around. It's the same thing. It's a soul. It's the ghost of the ancestors. But then another problem is they also believe that they will go on to the afterlife to serve their um, master. So you, people used to commit suicide to serve their master in the afterlife, meaning the master was maintained his original form in the afterlife. However, according to Buddhism, he's reincarnated. Yet according to Taoism, which was more prevalent in Japan than we imagine, the soul breaks up and goes back to the Tao to be reformed into something else. So this is where the sort of contradictions of Japanese worship come in. And it's never really ironed out in a logical western sense which i know you say well they're not logical or western but still they are very clever people so it becomes an issue that it's just you know we don't mind anyway guys my name is anthony cummins i just want to thank the shogun for a great video and for starting giving me the idea for this uh, if you would like to uh, support me guys the channel it absolutely really helps if you buy the book of bushido on amazon and give it a review reviews and sales through amazon really do help so you don't have to get it anywhere else and the art of war again go grab a copy review it whether it's kindle or uh, that one's on audio the uh out of war and my book of ninja is also on audio now so get yourself a copy right guys see you soon